What's going on guys? We have had some requests for some uh, West Side Barbell footage. We put some videos out previously and you guys seem to have some interest in it. So we're just gonna kind of put together a montage of uh, clips that we've got of full training or partial training sessions from when we were down there. We spent, or Christy spent about a year going down. I spent about two um, starting early 2017. I received an Instagram message from somebody asking me if I wanted to come train down at Westside Barbell. And I looked at Pat and I was like, what is Westside Barbell? I got this message and he immediately was like, oh, we have to go. So when we got there, they kind of pulled us into a room and we're just kind of like, basically, you're gonna work hard and you're gonna work really effing hard here. And that's what you're gonna do. And there's no excuses. There's, you just, you show up and you do the work. Uh, you guys can see like a lot of this was uh, iPhone footage. So this was kind of previous to when we had like, a legit camera set up. So we apologize for that, but it is just, you know, raw behind the scenes footage from when we were down there. Um, you'll see Joe, he was the guy that we work with. Super smart, really nice guy. Uh, nice, but also no bullshit. Ruthless. Work. Ruthless is <laughs> a very good word to put it. Um, so some of these sessions will be uh, in full. I spent a lot of time in the belt squat machine, we both did. You guys got a little clip there. A lot of times it will be weight on it, but there's also a lot of bands as well. So that band tension is pretty rough. Uh, for me, kind of one of the goals was to strengthen my posterior, which meant a lot of time spent in that machine. Um, Christy spent a lot as well, but yeah, you'll see here. This is when the Buttery Bros came down. They did the uh, Road to the Games video which was kind of wild. In the belt squat machine, it's really different because it works your posterior chain, your hips, your glutes. It works everything in a different way because it's pulling down on you. So you don't have a barbell loaded on your spine. So your glutes and your hips and everything is on fire. So basically what we were training is we were training movements we would do in CrossFit. Like you just saw me doing some hang clean and jerks. Now you see me essentially doing some D balls. Now I'm gonna take a sandbag and learn to Basically, almost like I do a sandbag over shoulder, but I'm learning how to use my hips when they're almost like weighted or tied down to be able to use the power from the closed hip and the extension to drive that sandbag and be able to put it on top of that, that box plus some of those mats. It was a very evil machine. And with Joe, when he'd have us working, a lot of times he wouldn't tell us what we were doing, so the mental aspect would start to play into it. He'd be like, you're gonna go until I say stop. And sometimes I swear we, surpassed his expectations and so he wouldn't say stop he'd add on 20 more seconds maybe from the original plan this is my my hypothesis i could be wrong um but other times we probably did stick to the plan but we would usually come in go through a strength piece and then hit this kind of metabolic conditioning piece depending on what it was it usually ended in the belt squat machine and then we hit an accessory on the end yeah we started this going into 2017 uh, it's still, Chrissy being a smaller athlete, we even then we're looking to kind of add like boot strength or the ability to kind of uh, do like the strongman objects. And this, they definitely help with that. But at the same time, I think something that we learned was the amount of stimulus and loading when training with that volume was hard to maintain. Uh, this was actually Logan Collins, who's another games athlete, and he's extremely fit. He came up for the 2017 season as well to do some training with us. And I had some of an unfair advantage here because I've been going down to the west side regularly, and he was definitely not privy to this type of training. Uh, so we, we put a hurt on anything, but he got a lot out of it as well. But we basically did a CrossFit workout in here. I can't remember exactly what it was, um, but we were doing plate holds, which was another stimulus of loading and then walking taps, which was basically creating a standard. So a lot of times in the belt squat machine, you'll just do walking, which works your posterior, but this created the standard to where you're having to lift your feet off high enough to touch the band. So I think we were doing something like 60 band taps, 50 or 60, turning around, doing dumbbell snatches. Uh, those look like maybe 50 or 60 pound dumbbells, probably 60. Then you turn around, grab the plates again, and do like 60, 50 or 60 taps, which was just, horribly exhausting, but the time under tension with the belt squat on your hips um, is just absolutely exhausting and fatiguing. So you guys can kind of see there, there's also, there's not very much weight, but there is a band attached as well, which is constantly pulling down on you. And the feeling that I would kind of associate this with is like if you loaded a heavy back squat, 
took it out of the rack and then just stood there with it on your back for three or four minutes where it's that kind of feeling where you're not necessarily squatting it but just that pressure uh, accumulates over the, over a period of time and you don't have the compression on your spine though so it's specifically pressure on your glutes and on your hips and it's like where you start to feel like you have bambi legs and you can start to feel all of your muscles start to shake and you feel like almost like your legs are just going to give out underneath of you that's what the belt spot machine does to you yeah, the, it, again, like kind of what Chris was saying, the benefit is that it isn't loading your back and there is no spinal compression and there's a lot of benefit to that. But at the same time, it is a very heavy load for a long period of time and that does take a toll on your CNS. Um, where maybe not muscularly as much, but you will feel so tired and fatigued or we would the next day after this, especially not being like our primary source of training, doing CrossFit for our primary source of training and this for uh, accessory, uh, I guess not accessory, but strength training, strength strong training man on the object. At this time, we were going down once a week. So, without this being our primary source of um, kind of training, doing it once a week took a large toll, and to be able to recover from that was challenging. So, as many as much benefits as we got from Christy training down there, doing that at a time where you're trying to peak for the games um, was probably a little bit counterproductive, at least at that point where the recovery from the volume of CrossFit along with the volume of the heavy loading and time under tension was just a hard thing to manage. So what the schedule looked like, I would train CrossFit hard all week long and I would usually go into players on Saturday morning early and I would focus on like a steady state cardio piece, no loading, absolutely no loading because I knew we were going to be loaded down at Westside. Then we would drive down to Westside, probably, it was probably like 1 o'clock, 1.30 and the, it was about a 35 minute drive from where we live. It's literally the opposite end of Columbus. And the entire time driving down, I would just, I wouldn't be able to say a word. Like I was so scared. I never knew what we were doing. I knew the pain that was gonna come. I think every time we were there, Joe probably brought me to tears. And not tears like, I don't cry. I don't throw up when I work out and I don't cry. And this guy brought me to tears multiple times because it was just pushing and pushing and it was pushing that he knew I was capable of doing it. So I wasn't ever in danger, but it was pushing past the limits that I mentally set upon myself. And so when you do that weekly, along with and on top of all of the CrossFit training we were doing in the gym, it just became to be a lot. And I was finding that maybe looking back in hindsight, I wasn't recovering the way that I should have going back into a lot of my CrossFit workouts. Yeah, and part, part of it was like the idea was like, you were going to hurt worse here than anybody's going to hurt doing any of their training. And there's definitely truth to that. And there's actually a couple clips, they're a little bit longer towards the end of this video where you, they're almost hard to watch because you can see how hard Christy's struggling. Um, where it's like, should we stop this and pull the plug? But okay. again, like you'll, nobody else is putting themselves in that dark of a place. But at the same time, it was probably a little bit counterproductive in the overall uh, stimulus that it was putting on. Um, Just became a little bit too much. For Christy, for me, I actually, I really enjoyed it. It did push me really hard. Joe was amazing. And we kind of tackled different muscle groups that for me were a little bit weaker, like posterior uh, bench press. And I got extremely, I put on a ton of strength in the time that I spent down there. And after 2017, I spent another year uh, where I was going two days a week in preparation for I think the 2018 regionals and I did get a ton stronger and learn uh, an incredible amount while we were going down there. So now we're doing some Bradford presses going back and forth. I can't remember, I think we were hitting a, a total, uh, a cum hitting one large number going back and forth until we hit that. And the bamboo bar is still some one of our favorite implements. We've got one at our house, we've got one at the gym, we use it regularly. What the bamboo bar is, is a super lightweight bar. It's even lighter than a training bar. And it, it, it's a little bit more flexy, so it's made out of, I believe, probably bamboo wood. Maybe that's why it's called that. I don't know. It's an earthquake bar. And it has notches, and you can hang with bands, plates, kettlebells, whatever. And the further, so the closer notch to your shoulder, the more stable you're gonna be. The more you work those weights out, away from your body so longer access the more unstable that you're going to be and it's really going to cause you to stabilize with your midline with your shoulders and it's just going to highlight any imbalance that you have yeah it's it's really light but very strong so when you add those kind of those outside weights they're wobbling um it you you feel everything so a heavy stiff bar is going to kind of dampen that the light bar makes it to where it accentuates it and will work a lot of your stabilizing muscles 
This so. plow thing is where Ro got the idea, I believe, for the 2016, 2017 games. I think that's what I was told. Don't quote me on that. We did uh, so much stuff. We did so much of this and it just completely, and he, on top of it, he made us weight vest everything and each week I would show up, he would add more weights to my weight vest. So we had not only the weights on our body, but there was weights inside of the weight vest that he was taping to us and also sliding into pockets. So we would add weight and we would record this and try to get stronger each week, but something I really struggled with was a farmer hold. So this was a really good way of training, being able to hold something super, super heavy and also having to move that load for a distance. These were insanely miserable. So your hips are already loaded, being pulled down by the belt squat machine. You can see I've got a vest on, there's actually a bunch of weights taped to the top of it. And then you're also using your posterior to do these, like, basically deficit RDLs, uh, which were just completely fatiguing. So they're exhausting, and that time under tension is just crazy. So this is something we would, we would actually do for snatch positional work. <laughs> Um, which was like pulling the sled from behind, so you had to work on your extension, activating your back, and then also stabilizing it because you're using the bamboo bar. So any way you can possibly pull a sled or push it or carry it, we did it a hundred different ways. But during this time, it was the strongest I've ever been for sure. There's no doubt about that. bamboo bar, this time implementing it with the uh, belt squat machine. So what I'm doing here is I really struggled with overhead stability, tricep strength. One of my shoulders was stronger than the other and just, just honestly just working strength. Just trying to get stronger, my stabilizers, my hips, my pressing. For me, it's always a lot of triceps that was that were pretty weak, so we which are still pretty weak, but we were just working on that. And then it's just taking these movements, breaking down the movements we do in CrossFit and just trying to strengthen them in in little ways or then pairing it with something that I would do regularly in CrossFit and just making it harder. So now I'm using a 100 pound sandbag because we knew in the 2017 regional there was gonna be a sandbag. So we are training that in every way possible. So when I got to that sandbag, I was more than ready just to crush it. And I still feel like to this day, this truly helped me learn how to use my hips when using a sandbag. I'm thankful, I'm grateful for all of this training. It was by far one of the, hey, my shoulders look pretty jacked there. <laughs> Um, is, this was by far one of the hardest times of my entire life. Uh, we're gonna leave a lot of this footage here just for you guys to watch. It was definitely no walk in the park and it made me a stronger athlete. I do think it, it challenged me outside of the gym to where I could learn to push harder and harder in my CrossFit sessions. And I'm very thankful for this time. It's not something we currently incorporate because especially as I get older, I'm 32 years, old now, especially as you get older, like recovery becomes more and more important, but we do incorporate West Side methodologies and things that Joe taught us into our training, just not to this intensity for an entire session. Yeah, it's hard to make yourself do these types of things for sure. They were on the verge of torture sometimes. Yeah, I would never do this by myself. If also, Joe wasn't there screaming at me, I wasn't doing it either. Also just the sheer volume. Like when we would do, we spent some time working on my bench and tricep strength in general, and the amount of volume we would do in an hour and a half session was insane. But to be able to do that, recover from it, be like, I guess I don't have rhabdo, was also a learning experience of how far you can push yourself and make gains without being detrimental. It was also super important, so when we started there, we were both wearing Converse, high top Converse, just to support our ankles and also super flat to the ground, so we could feel the ground and what we were doing. And you guys can kind of see us, which into my high top nobles, which I love, and they're also super flat to the ground, and they did the trick and did the job just well. I'll never forget this, this was my birthday. That's a horrible birthday gift. This is one of the harder videos to watch, so it's a little bit long, but we're just starting and you can already see kind of the despair in Christy's face and it only gets worse. I will never have gone through pain like yep. this. Yep. So yep. not only now are you supporting yourself yep. in the belt squat that's pulling down on your hips, yep. you've got the, that's the Cambridge bar, right? Yep. That's also hooked with the hands pulling her forward. So she's having to use her post here to stay in a good upright position and not let that pull her and her shoulders over her hips. And those walks, as simple as it seems, you just kind of lift one foot up off the floor at a time, is incredibly challenging. 
along with the stimulus of, you know, again, doing something like picking up a deadlift, you know, say you're a heavy deadlift for you, and then just holding it for minutes at a time. Where you're picking it up is challenging, but just the loading that it's putting on your body is extremely fatiguing and takes a huge toll on your skin mass. And what you guys probably aren't seeing behind the scenes is like every so many seconds, whatever whatever workout we were doing, he would be adding plates. So for instance, you'd start with an empty belt spot machine that just had the band as resistance, and then maybe every 20 seconds he was starting to add a five pound plate. We were going for as long as we could possibly go in. And then at a certain point, now it's okay, Chris, you have to do good mornings, and you're sustaining that weight. And so constantly in behind the scenes, like that weight on the belt squat machine is going up. He's calling out different things per the 20 seconds. And I'm just, I'm trying to get a stronger back. I'm trying to get stronger glutes. I'm trying to learn how to use my hamstrings. And you know, this, this memory for me sticks out very clearly. This was probably one of my worst sessions that I was just like probably screaming and also, Praying Pat was going to intervene oh, yeah, and make it all stop, oh, yeah. but he did, and yes. I did make it through. But I'll yes. never, I'll never forget that session. Yes. Yeah, I'm yes. just literally on the verge of being to. Yeah. Do so I need to say something? Yeah. So you can kind of see that weight on the belt squat on, machine, yeah. and this is where he's just sliding yeah. those weights on. Yeah. But again, I Ten think. More. I think it made me a stronger athlete. I think it, Joe is a this very bigger. intelligent guy. He's super smart. It, it definitely progressed my training. And I'm thankful and grateful just for the opportunity that he provided for me to be able to come down. And, you know, I think he took me to another level as an athlete. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime experience where yeah, you just so happen to be in Columbus where we're like all the ways and you just so happen to have an after opportunity. So it's not a thing that you are able to go down and sign up and just show up. It's kind of an invite only. And as famous as it is, it is a pretty small place. Um, there's stuff everywhere. And, you know, it looks more like a yeah, like garage gym. I think that's the feel that they want. Everything is just about the work. This is it, Christy. Glam. There's no shiny about it. You've got 30 more. Don't worry. Pretend that I know. Yeah, I know. I don't want to walk for another minute. I'm going to be done. I know. I know. There's a lot of cutting edge ideas there that change the way people train for strength. You just keep fucking moving as much as you can. There's a couple videos you can also watch. I would continue watching. We're going to let some footage go. There's some really good stuff. But Westside nice Burst the World is a pretty nice cool documentary on YouTube, as well Come as on. if you watch that 2017 Road to the Baby with the same dancer or not, you're going to see a baby with the same baby class, but we also do take you Westside with us, so you get to see some of that training in real time. Yeah. So definitely check those out, they're super cool videos, and they're going to tell you more about Westside. Yeah. But in the meantime, we just wanted to roll some of this footage because we get messages about it often, and just share a little bit about that class at Westside with you. Seven. Yeah. Come on, Tristan. Right this is making a statement. 2017. There's still quite a bit of time. Yeah. Come on. Ten. You got 20 more. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if you guys yes, are like there it is. Fold or anything Come like on. that, but Twelve. you know, the first just feels heavy, I and then after you know that. Yeah. the loading on your body that gets taxed. And, and the tears are about to start coming. I know. Fourteen. <laughs> Here come the walls. So, uh, I think this entire piece was morning, somewhere around five minutes, Come on now. Squeeze that button. which is pretty wild. And I didn't ever. Come on. So, it's also a testament to Chrissy's grit. One. She's an endurance yes. athlete, but yes, ten. There you go. Come on. She's strong Nine. and she's mentally strong. Power hits now. Power hits now. There you go. Seven. Come on. Six. Come on. Five. Yeah. Four. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one more, one more. Middle walk is last thing you're doing. Yo, one more middle walk. That's it. That's it. You can see that's really hurting. You just fucking hold on to that shit. Come on. Ah, there you go. I know. I know. This was something he definitely built me up. So he didn't toss me in the belt to punch me, blow a safety bar on my back, throw some bands on it, and make me work for five plus minutes at a time. This was probably close to one of our last sessions before we took a break before heading out to that 2017 regional. 2017 regional, I took second to Sarah Sigmund's 
I was going in hoping to win that regional until Sarah got announced that she moved to this area and started training at, training at Mayhem. But I was super pumped. I set one of the records in one of the events, the ring muscle up, dumbbell overhead squat. I was as fit as I've ever been heading into that regional, and I attribute a lot of that to this West Side training. Yeah, it is, it is wild to think about. I remember the first time I was in that, I could not believe how hard it was. And I think it was maybe a minute total. I can't remember what the loading was, and it obviously dictated how challenging it is. But we definitely built up to five, six, seven minutes doing different, different things inside the belt squad. So you certainly can build up a tolerance to just about anything. This is really cool. I got you, come on now. I'm going to say go to your happy place, it's just about what I was trying to do. Big steps, big steps! Come on! Last little bit here! I think it's also trusting in your coach, so I... Pat's probably trying to rescue me out of the belt squat machine at this point. Um, but it's trusting in your coach, and I trusted Joe, and I knew that he had my best interest, and he wasn't going to hurt me as an athlete, but he was going to push me to my limit. And that's what I needed to be able to head to the CrossFit Games and be able to compete with the girls I needed to compete with, and he was able to help me do that. This was another terrible thing that we would do holding those balls, which I think that was maybe like 50 pounds. Come on, and Chris, it would you can do it. Also get slippery because you're sweaty. So like trying to even just hold that for minutes at a time was a challenge within itself. Um, and you can see, like depending on the loading now, she's having a hard time even picking her feet up because of what the loading is. It was probably a little bit lighter in that last video. You could actually get your feet up and off the floor, but there was definitely times where you were just shifting the weight to what you can to even like pick that foot up you know, a centimeter off the floor. We do have a wide stance in our toes pointed out for a reason because that's firing up a big piece of our glute, which is what we want. We want to be working and strengthening the hips and all the stabilizers. So I'm in a wider stance, and if I I would come narrow or my toes would start on, pointing Chrissy. forward. He'd be yelling at me to get my feet back out wide yeah. and also just to keep picking them up. And it was a really odd feeling because it's like, man, I should be able to pick my feet up no problem. But even Pick trying to lift them a half inch off the floor yep. was a dynamic task no, in itself. I usually try not to show a lot of emotion when I compete, uh, whether it's good, bad, whatever it is. I try to stay really level and right in the middle, and you guys can clearly see that that's not the case being down here at Westside. I couldn't hide anything, and you know, I was just in a crap ton of pain. These are a great machine though, and there's some things yep. you can do to emulate it as well. And being able to create the time under tension without loading your back is something that's very beneficial for sure. Yeah, come on now. The longer you have that hip, the more it's gonna be better for you. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Come on, Chris, you're almost there. You can do it. Come on, meow. Yep. Got 30 pounds left. Nice. Yeah, come on. Does that bring back memories? Yeah. Doesn't bring back good ones. Side to side, big steps now. But again, it's a journey and it's a process, and I'm thankful for it because it's gotten to me where, to where I am today. It definitely yeah, made me tougher, yeah. made me stronger, made me mentally more sound, and I am lucky to have gotten the opportunity to, yeah. you know, break through ceilings yeah. and challenge myself in a way that I absolutely never could have challenged myself on my own. Sure. And on this thing, when you're in the belt squat machine doing any of this kind of stuff, there is no break. So when you're doing most workouts, you can find a spot for a rest or a break. Here, that constant time under tension, even if you stop walking, it, it's not a break. You're still heavily loaded and it's pulling down on your hip. So even if you have your legs completely locked out and you're just standing there, Grab it's the exhausting Grab and the stimulus home. is uh, very tiny. Go, got 30. So when you're moving and not moving, jump. there is no break when you're locked up. Yep, come on. 30. So here the belt squat's pulling down, so I'm thinking about hip extension as I open to be able to drive that D-ball to my shoulder. But if you think about it, we use that hip extension in power cleans, we use that hip extension in snatches, we use it in sandbag, we use it in push trick, we use it in so much in CrossFit. And so this really taught me how to open up my hips. Come on now. I almost look like I'm laughing, but I'm pretty sure I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, there's something laughing in there. But we hope this was interesting for you guys. It's just a bunch of footage that we pulled together. 
it's nothing too fancy, but it is a behind the scenes. It shows you kind of the raw, raw experience that we have while we were down there. Uh, we're super grateful for the experience. We learned a ton from it. But I think Chrissy's probably glad that we're not going down, or she's not going down there um, anymore right now. You know, that drive down would be quiet. The drive back, I'd be the most chatty person you can imagine because I survived. And each week my goal was to work as hard as I could, but also in a way survive. So, hope you guys really enjoyed this. We'd love to see some comments. I hope you have had fun watching it and learning. And if you have comments about it, let us know. We'd love to answer them. But don't forget, smash that like button. Have a great day. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Enjoy.